Well, hey everybody. Sorry we've been absent for a few weeks, but we just moved to... Moved to Germany. We've been a little busy. Yeah. <laughs> We're still alive. Barely. <laughs> Barely alive. We're finally here in Germany. We've settled in. This is our th we're starting our fourth week. Yeah, I today. Think so. Today starts our fourth week. Yep. So we've been here three weeks. We thought we would just kind of show you our last few weeks before we moved here because I know a lot of you watching my videos have commented below that you're also a family of five or six or three, um, but you're a family that has children and you're also wanting to move abroad or you are moving abroad and you're wanting to know the logistics of how we did things. And I've got everything recorded for you, lots of videos to show you of our last few weeks before we moved. There was a lot to do. <laughs> so let's get started. Well, hey everybody, welcome back to our channel. I'm Sarah McFall of MyMaryAndIcyLife.com and this is... Hi, I'm Kevin. So we'll backtrack to February 1st, which is when we... Closed on the house. Yeah, when we sold on our house. So I've got a video here to show you of my, like how I was feeling emotionally as we were going to sell the house. It was a lot harder than I thought it was gonna be. Okay, we're on our way to close on our house. And in less than two weeks, for Germany. I'm kind of sad to close on our house though. Yeah, it's been good to us. I don't want somebody else to have my house. <laughs> I like our house and I'm, I'm sad to see it go. So this hasn't been my favorite part about going to Germany. I, I'm going to miss our house a lot. It is a special house to us. We just have to build special memories in our new place. Yeah, but we won't own it, so it's not the same. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so anyway, just thought I'd let you guys know. I mean, the one lucky thing we had was that, uh, you know, when we sold the house, the buyers allowed us to stay in the house up to 29 days. Uh, I mean, that was huge. So we closed on the 1st, but we didn't actually, well, and then we moved on the 13th. We la flew on the 13th and we stayed, we stayed there for another week and a half. Yeah, so uh, one of my big jobs was getting everything packed up, trying to figure out, you know, what's going in this big U-Pack we ship, 100 cubic feet that we're getting sent on the slow boat, which we still don't have yet, but we it's coming soon. <laughs> uh, so I had to figure out what's going in there, how can I cram the most amount of stuff in there, and then what, you know, how many carry-ons we having? Well, that's set, you know, one per person, but you know, how many check bags are we going to have? How's everything going to fit? You know, where do we put the kitchen knives so they don't end up in the carry-on luggage? Uh, stuff like that. It was a massive job and you did an awesome job. Yeah, it was a lot of just organizing and then like, you know, finally once we did leave our house and stayed with our in-laws for the last few days or so, just... Almost a week. Yeah, it was mm -hmm. close to a week. Where do the last bits of things go? Like I'd already planned all the space in the in the check bags and so it's like, oh, we need to bring this. Oh, and we need to bring this and we need to bring this. And it's like, there's no space for that stuff. It was very stressful. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> yes, we started to run out of space right. that we just left in my parents' basement. And unfortunately they have to go through all of that stuff and figure out what to do with it. And we ended up with an extra, one extra. Uh, I had We had planned for two check bags per person, but we, and so that would have been that was 12. We still, we ended up needing another, another check bag. So we had 13 check bags. So we had 13 check bags, six carry-ons, six personal items. And that was huge. <laughs> yes. It, he, he put his engineer skills to work to make all that happen because we had to decide what we needed the first, you know, four right. to six weeks everything that we would need because it's COVID era and we didn't know what we'd be able to buy and, you know, make sure we have enough toothpaste and shampoo mm -hmm. and soap and, you know, all these things that we dishes had to make Dishes for sure. this, dishes, yes. you know, for the kitchen. Yeah, we brought melamine glasses and melamine plates and bowls, you know, a whole set of outdoor like melamine dishware so that they wouldn't get broken while being, you know, while flying on the airplane. Mm -hmm. And that served us really, really well. Yeah. If you can arrive with dishes, you're in good shape. It's gonna help you a lot. But of course, if you're not moving in the middle of a pandemic, it's gonna be a whole lot easier. So yeah. <laughs> COVID has made this a lot harder, a lot harder. Yeah, yeah. So while he was doing the ship, the you know, getting the shipment together for UPAC We Ship, I was selling everything <laughs> on Facebook Marketplace. Everything I mean, must go. All, every weekend, I was, <laughs> 
nonstop on my phone and just selling things and everything would sell quick. I priced things pretty low and they would, they would go out the door fast. But the thing is you're having to go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth with all these strangers. And it was exhausting. I was so exhausted. I told Kevin so many times, I don't think I can do it again. I don't think I can sell one more piece of furniture. <laughs> I'm so over this. I don't want to do this anymore. And it was like, Every item that left the house, it was like a piece of my heart was going out with every piece. Because by the end, we were only selling things that I actually loved. You know, things that we staged the house with were, were my most beautiful pieces of furniture, were my favorite pieces of furniture. And my favorite things were all leaving the house. And you know, one thing that really helped is my best friend. And if you're watching Melissa, you know, you know, it's you. She took a lot of my stuff because you know, we're besties. So we have almost the same style. And uh, she took a lot of my favorite pieces. She took a lot of my favorite lamps and favorite. She took my favorite rug. My, all my office furniture was like my favorite stuff. She took a lot of that and um, I gave some of my favorite things to my mom and my sister. And so now when I come back to visit in the US, I know that I can go to my favorite people and see like some of my special things. And that really helped the grieving process for me and saying goodbye and knowing that the people I love the most would be taking care of my favorite things. And of course, as time goes on, I know that probably in a year or two, am I really gonna care about that stuff anymore? Probably not, I'm guessing not. I have new furniture now. Um, but for that short period of time that was very difficult, it helped. Yeah. So yeah, once I sold most of the furniture that we possibly could, we were sleeping on mattresses. On the floor, yeah, mattress on the on floor. On the floor. <laughs> and we were using their suitcases and the foot lockers that we had as dressers. And that's how we were able to live in our house as long as we possibly could because six of us moving in with my parents was overwhelming for both them and us. You know, you need a lot of space for six people and four very loud, active kids. So we were trying to delay that as much as possible. So six days before we left, we moved into my parents' house and that helped a ton. If we didn't have them nearby, I guess we would have gone to an Airbnb or a hotel for a week. Hmm. Um, we could have done that, but it was way more comfortable to go to my parents' house. Thank you, mom and dad, you helped us a lot. Um, yeah, so we had like our last dinner in the house. All of the last moments, for me, I don't think they were so much for you. Kevin's mind was our like already, I'm in Germany. I'm there, I'm gone. <laughs> but I was like, I had not anticipated how much I was going to grieve and how hard it was to leave. It was hard for me. Well, for me, it started looking, it didn't look like our house anymore. And when it was starting to be empty and yeah, you know, it's like, true. I, I'm not sad, you know, it's, it's already different and changed and it's not the same. So I'm, you know, I sort of had already moved on because in those yeah. last weeks, it, it just wasn't the same anyway. So I was already like in that transition period. That's true. It did stop looking like our house, especially once we started to stage it to move. Yeah. It was like, it doesn't feel like me anymore. All of my pictures are off the walls. And for anyone who's moved, you probably understand this feeling. Um, even if it's just, you know, 10 minutes down the road, it can still be so hard just because moving, moving by itself is really, really difficult. Oh yeah, it's packing everything up and all yeah. that. And so try moving abroad and you make it 10 times harder. <laughs> yeah, and you need to rent a box truck to take all of your foot lockers to the airport, you know? Yes. <laughs> it's just crazy. It's very hard. <laughs> okay, so we had our last dinner in the house. I'll show you a little clip of that because it was fun. It is our last official dinner in this house as a family before we moved to Germany. Gabriel's not happy about that. <laughs> So what is, what was your favorite thing, <laughs> Ella? What was your favorite thing about living in this house? You just said it. You went over for a birthday last year. Mm. And Grayson, what was your favorite thing? <laughs> what was your favorite thing about this house? Uh, Playing with Braun in the woods? Uh, <laughs> Have you? Fires outside in the backyard. Griffin, no, um, How about you, Griffin? What is your favorite thing about this house? When you first met Bron. Oh, good grief. Hey, Gabriel, how about you? What's your favorite thing about this house? All right. What is your favorite thing? Um, 
doing yard work outside and all the kids running around and playing. Eating pizza. Mm. And eating pizza. And eating pizza. Oh, yeah, pizza night? Good. Every Friday night's pizza night. <laughs> mm, it's kind of sad, huh, guys? Are we sad or excited or both? How long We're excited! Video? We're excited! Gabriel's just going to keep his grump face on. <laughs> Okay, fair enough. What is your favorite thing in this house, Mommy? <gasps> oh, um, our basement, my new kitchen, <laughs> and... Look at me, look at me. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> and bringing home you and Griffin from the hospital in this house. Me? Griffin and Ella came to this house. In the woods. I love looking out our window right here and seeing the trees. Mommy, look at this. Mommy, look at this, Mommy. Oh, boy. What are we going to show me? <laughs> oh, my. She's spilling water everywhere. <laughs> oh okay, Grayson, what is your favorite thing? Mm. Camping fire. Statues? The trees. You're, you're being a blank. Camping fire. I know. I loved all our times uh, doing know. cookouts on the, at the fire. I don't. Daddy, Except my hair smell like smoke. Oh. That's, uh, good yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Oh god. So then after that last dinner, you know, that same day we sold the playground. You can see a clip here of the kids last time playing on the playground. That was really sad for me. Oh, that was a hard moment. And. Um, especially all the neighborhood kids. We had finally found some neighborhood kids for our kids to play with. And leaving all of them, if any of you are watching, know that we love and miss you and it was hard to leave you all. And uh, you were all very special to us and it was very special to the kids. And we've already met some kids here too, but you know, nothing replaces a person. So you'll always be missed and loved. Yeah. Yeah, and like the day after when you know, the, the this trampoline was gone and the playground was gone. And you just like look out in the backyard and it's just empty. And it's like, yes. yeah, it's not the same. It looked like a ghost town. Like it was just like, yeah. what happened to our backyard? It was so sad. One thing that made it easier is my dad helped a lot. He has a pickup truck. We did not. So he helped us get, you know, two loads to the dump. And a gazillion loads to Goodwill. <laughs> a gazillion loads to Goodwill. And he helped us move our stuff into his house. And my dad was a huge help. Thank you, dad, if you're watching. And um, of course, my mom was a big help too in helping us watch the kids while we emptied the house and cleaned out the house. Yeah. And the kids actually went to school. The boys went to school during the day. They, they wanted to stay in school as long as possible. <laughs> Which actually worked out. Yeah, yeah, they were gone at school and were, you know, busy. Mm -hmm. The cat actually got to stay in the house the longest. She <laughs> she stayed and she stayed all the way up until the he morning. Talk about the cat. <laughs> oh, the cat's important. She's, she's <laughs> awesome. So she got to stay in the house all the way up until the morning before we left. So yeah, she did. But she was she was traumatized, I think, because the house was empty and we weren't there. She was doing uh, she was doing eat, eat, what do you call it? Eat, stress, eat, eating. stress eating. She was stress eating. <laughs> she gained like three pounds that last week. She was all by herself, had nothing to do but eat. Yeah, our cat's really skinny, yeah. so she, she did. You can tell me she gains weight. She slimmed down a little bit now that well, she's here. Yeah. <laughs> Our cat was stress eating. Oh my gosh. It was stressful for everyone. Even the cat. Even the cat. <laughs> yeah, so while the boys were at school, me and Kevin and even Ella sometimes came over and you can see a clip of her here cleaning out the house with us. She was actually a great help in helping yeah. clean. And uh, yeah, we finally got everything out. I didn't think we were ever gonna get to the finish line. It's like every time you turn around, there's more stuff here, more stuff there. You know, anyone who's moved understands this. This isn't just for moving abroad, but you you just find more and more and more and more and more stuff. It's like it multiplies. <laughs> and it was, uh, it was hard getting all of it out. And I didn't think we were ever gonna make it to an empty house. But after three days, it only took three days. Yeah, it's about, yeah. Yeah. And we actually emptied out the house, and um, I was very excited by that point. Yeah, like, like the last day, <sighs> the day before we left, it was uh, had already been done. Yeah. And we just sort of were tying up loose ends and stuff like that. We weren't s struggling to get the house done that day before. So. Yeah. 
And of course, there's still plenty of stuff to do, <laughs> even when the house is empty. But, you know, it was nice to not have that hanging over our heads. Yeah. Yeah. And then we had to go withdraw the kids from school, which that was another hard moment for me because I just I had no idea what the schools are going to be like here in Germany. You know, <laughs> you can talk to expats all, that live all over Germany. You can talk to Germans and get an idea for how the schools are. But everyone has a different experience. You know, every school is different. Every county is different. Every state is different, just like in the U.S. So I didn't know, like, are we going to like the kids teachers? Are we going to like their school? Because where we were in the U.S., we loved their school. Yeah, it was, was an great. awesome school. We had awesome teachers, very supportive place. Just there, you could just feel the energy in the school. It's a happy, wonderful place for children. And uh, withdrawing them that day, I was like about to cry. It was hmm. it was hard. I didn't I didn't even want to do it. It was like I don't want those papers. No, don't give them to me. <laughs> I don't need their transcripts. You know, it was harder than I thought it was going to be. But we're going to do a video soon to, to tell you about their school experience here in Germany, American yeah. kids' school experience. And a little teaser, it's been awesome. Yeah. It's been really good. It's been real good. Yeah. I mean, there's a few mix-ups on language stuff, but yeah, <laughs> but that's to be expected. Yeah. But the, the people are kind. Oh, the yeah. Teachers, the teachers, really the principals, nice. everyone have yeah. been wonderful here and very accommodating. And they're doing their best to help us. And... We couldn't be more grateful for how they've been with us. So yep. that'll be in a, a probably two more videos after this one. So <laughs> stick around for that. Yeah. So not only did we have to get all of our physical stuff together, but we had to get all of our paperwork together. At least the visa and all that was settled. Um, but the cat again, the cat, yes. the cat yes. needed the cat. Yes. The cat needed to be approved yes. by the U.S. Department of Agriculture to be able to go. Yes. So you got to take her to the vet. Then you got to send the papers off, and then it has to be done within ten days of when you leave. So then and you she have has to, to get, get microchipped. We had to get her microchipped and all this stuff. And tested for all these diseases. Well, she had to they had her vaccines. Right? Yeah, okay. had to get vaccines, and then she had to be cleared to travel by the vet, and then that had to go to the USDA, and then they had to send back her paperwork. So I had all this official stamped oh. paperwork for the cat. To go uh and then uh, and then the covid tests um we had yeah. to have we had to all have negative covid tests i mean that was like nail biting are our tests gonna come back positive I right hope because not. you can be a carrier and not have symptoms yeah, so right. i was worried we might be carriers and not know it so so we had to have our covid tests our testing had to happen with no more than 48 hours before we arrived in Germany. You know, the trips, you know, the trip with the kit layovers and all that, you know, is long. So it had to be 24 hours. That meant, you know, the day before we left, we had to get our COVID tests. And, you know, I, you know, you, you have to have a particular type of COVID test. To, to be and approved in to Germany. Be, you know, there was only certain ones that were approved by the Germans. And so I was like... Yeah researching well what is the specificity and sensitivity of these tests and does it reach the benchmark levels and and so you know and it turned out there was a rapid test that we could get uh that we could get the results that same day uh but it was really you know it was nerve-wracking trying to find yeah. the right covid test and like what if i show up there and the the, the immigration officer is like nope got the wrong covid test back to georgia for you you know <laughs> it's like yes. i was so worried about that yes <laughs> There were so many pieces of the puzzle um, in getting here to Germany, you know, the visa, the COVID test. Um, I'm trying to think what else. There was way more than that. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like there was way more. Um, you know, if your flight gets canceled or not, because so many flights are so very, you know, empty. They yeah. practically have anyone on them, and they're, so they're canceling yeah. a lot of flights. Well, first, because the they, first time, the first flight that we had booked before we knew when we were actually leaving, that yes. one did get canceled. Right. And we had to reschedule right. it. Um, so I was worried our flight might get canceled. We're going to have COVID and not know yeah. it. Um, you know, the, our visas won't be the correct or they won't like our visas or right. and there were so many pieces of the puzzle that all had to fit perfectly. And if you take, it's like a Jenga game, <laughs> you take out one piece and the whole thing comes crashing down. You know, if, if our flight had been even delayed by a few days, like we had all this Ikea shipment that was arriving really soon <laughs> or just like two two or three days after we got arrived in Germany, more Ikea furniture was being shipped. So if we arrived any later, we were gonna have to arrange for somebody to come let them in, you know, a neighbor that we don't even know yet, you know, <laughs> or the landlord was gonna have to help us get someone in here. The landlords live in Estonia, they don't even live here. So it's like, it's, it was so stressful thinking of um, all the different ways. Mm -hmm. You just, you can't go there. It's like, you can't think of the worst case scenario 
or you're constantly stressed out. But I did anyway. Well, the thing I, the thing I told Sarah, I was like, okay, anyway. you know, before we're going on the trip, say, you know, we're going on an international flight with six kids and a cat. And I'm like, but you know what? Th those actual seven or eight hours or whatever that were on the flight are probably going to be the most most uh, calmest, re most relaxing hour <laughs> hours in yes. our last months. And they were. <laughs> they were, you know, they shockingly. Were. You know, you don't have anything to worry relaxing. about but keeping the kids happy and trying to get them to go to sleep and not having to worry about anything else. That's right. <laughs> I mean, it was nice once we got on that flight and yeah. we have video footage and all that to show you in the next video. So that's a little teaser for our next video. So yeah, it worked out. We got here, all of the pieces, they fit in so perfectly. You would yeah. say it was divinely, <laughs> divinely handled. It was like the hand of God was just putting every no, piece it, into place. It was my planning. Well, <laughs> <laughs> that is true. <laughs> I can't argue with that. <laughs> Kevin did it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Kevin took care of so much paperwork, so much research. He took care of all the business end of getting us here. And I took care of a lot more of the practical stuff of making yeah. sure we had the toothpaste and the shampoo and the, you know, all the things that I, I can take care of well. And he took care of what he could take care of well. And between the two of our teamwork. Yeah. Yep. Teamwork. Nice. Yeah. We, we did it. Yep. We did it. <laughs> we did. And then we'll show you in our next video how exhausting it was once we got here. <laughs> <laughs> and we're finally on the other side of extreme exhaustion. It's yep. like, okay, we're finally... <sighs> hitting our groove. <sighs> yeah, we are hitting our groove now. It's getting better. Yeah, so that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed our update about our life in Germany and getting to Germany and hope this video helped you. And if it did, we'd love if you'd give it a thumbs up. If you're not already a subscriber, we will have more videos coming out. So make sure you subscribe so you will get a notification about that. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. All right. Okay. I'll be there. Tschüss.